Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to construct a Moore machine that is going to output one for every a b occurring in sequence in the input. So in the input, when you have this a b b a b or something for each and every a b, it is going to output one one in your output thing. Okay. So for every a b occurring in sequence, the machine has to output one. Okay, the first step in the conversion of Moore or Morley machine, construction of any Moore or Morley machine, is to construct a DFA. Okay, the base model over here, which you are going to use, is the uh, deterministic finite automata to recognize the input as A B. Okay, so whenever the input is A followed by B, the input has to be uh, the output produced has to be one. Okay, so for the minimal requirement, I am going to construct a model. Okay, so here each state is going to have a value. So what I do, I'll give you an extra space. Q naught, Q one, and Q two. So whenever the input is exactly A followed by B, the model will produce one. Okay, so this is the base base requirement. Whenever A B is occurring in sequence, the output produced should be one. What happened with Moore machine is each state is associated with the uh, output. Okay, so whenever the transition enter into the state, the output one has to be produced. Okay, now it is a DFA, right? From a state on a input, it should have a transition. So your input symbol here are A and B. So from each and every state on each and every input symbol, we should have a transition. Now we'll check each and every state starting from Q naught on. Q naught is the place where on A we have a transition, so we should know what will happen if a B occurs here. So what will happen if I have any number of Bs in prefix of it when it is followed by A, followed by B, then we have to produce one. Okay, so any B that comes here will stay in this Q naught itself, and when the input consists of A followed by B, we are going to this Q two state. Okay. So for B, we'll stay in this Q naught since we haven't processed A B any more. So we'll stay for all the Bs in Q naught, and once we reach this A and followed by B, then we are going to this Q two state. Got it? So Q naught on A B, we had a transition. Now come to coming to this Q one state. So Q one is a place where already we have processed a A, and we are waiting for this B. So what will happen if you have some A in between? If any number of A come over here, if that is followed by a B, we have to go to Q two state. So what we do for all the A's, we stay here in Q one. If this A is followed by B, we go to this Q two state. Okay, so now we had done the transition for Q naught on A B, Q one on A B. Now coming to this Q two state. Okay, so Q two is the place where already we have processed an A B and output one is produced for it. So what next? We have to scan the input completely till it, uh, till all the elements of your all the alphabets of your input has been processed on, and for each and a, every a b occurring in sequence, we have to produce an output as one. Okay, so now what will happen if there is an a? So if after processing a and b, if you have a, if this a is followed by b, then for this we have to produce one, right? So what will be what we can do here is. For any a that comes in this Q two state, will go to this Q one, and if it is followed by a b, then that one will be produced as an output. Okay, if this a is followed by b, then one has to be produced as an output. Got it? Now coming to the next part, what will happen if a b comes after processing a b? If I have a b in the input, I have to cross verify for the remaining input if there is any possibility of getting a b. So I have to start from this Q naught state and check whether A and B is occurring in sequence or not. So what I do, if I have a B, I go back to the starting state and if this B is followed by A followed by a B, then one will be produced as an output. Okay, so the DFA is exactly like ending with the criteria. Okay, whenever the input end with A B, we have to accept it. Okay, and. Uh, Output for Q two is already desired, right? Q two is the place where, when exactly A followed by B occurs in sequence, then the transition will lies in Q two. So we made the output as one here. And what happened to the remaining cases? Let us add zero as the output for the remaining states. Okay, for the remaining states, Q naught or Q one, every state in Moore machine has to be attached with the output function. So Q naught is associated with zero, Q one as zero, and Q two is the only place where 
you will have the transition will lies whenever your input consists of a followed by b so i am going to produce one as a output now we'll check whether the input for some input whether it is acceptable or not uh, let us consider this input okay starting from the state q0 on q0 when the input is a where does it go it goes to q1 and q1 when the input is b where it goes it goes to q2 and q2 when the input is a where where it goes it go back to q1 state okay q1 when the input is a you have a self loop in q1 so q1 you will stay here and q1 when the input is b it goes to q2 okay now check with the output that is produced for each and every state so q0 the output is 0 q1 the output is 0 q2 the output is 1 q1 the output is 0 see each state is associated with the output right i am just writing that q1 it is 0 q2 it is 1 so how many number of ones we have it in the output we have two ones and what about your input in the input we have two ab occurring in sequence so for the corresponding two occurrence we got two outputs over here so this is how we can construct any more machine for any of the given applications so first we have to try to recognize the language using deterministic finite automata once you are able to recognize then you are you can produce a output whatever is required as per the need okay now coming to the way in which your automata has represented this is one way of representation okay so one way of representation is transition diagram another way of representation is transition table your transition table is same as that of your uh, dfa diagram with one small change you will have your state here this is your present state okay and uh, you will have this next state to be moved and you have a output function okay so for each and every state it might be q0 q1 or q2 it is associated with the output here q0 is associated with 0 q1 is associated with 0 and q2 is associated with 1 so the output function is exactly based on the present state okay so this is what we have discussed as the difference between more and merely machine for merely machine each uh, output is based on the present state and the input function whereas in more machine each state consists of its corresponding output okay and how does this next state is formed it is your normal transition function when input is a or input is b q0 when the input is a where it goes it goes to q1 q0 when the input is b it goes to q0 q1 when the input is a it goes to itself on b it goes to q2 q2 when the input is a it goes to q1 and when it is b it goes to q0 so this is your normal transition function and this is the output function a merely machine is easy for us to represent okay more machine is easy for us to represent merely machine is bit complicated since each link each transition has a output associated with it okay but both more and merely machine are equivalent same problem uh, you can either solve with more machine or a merely machine too okay so the next very important type of uh, representation we call it as a formal way of representing any automata tuple notation okay so here we have six tuples to represent the automata q sigma del uh, sorry it's not del before del we have uh, output function okay and del lambda and q not so these are all six tuples that are used to represent the automata so q will be a finite set of states and uh, sigma is your input function finite uh, set of input function or input symbols and this is your output symbol so in the previous example your input consists of a and b sequence where your output that you produce consists of zeros and ones right so that is your uh, this function and del is your normal transition function so transition function is given like this from a state on a input it goes to another state okay your normal transition function q not when the input is a it goes to so this function is there right so this is your normal transition function and that is given over here as del and you have this new function called lambda lambda is your output transition function so output transition function is from a state uh, output is associated okay so lambda of q not is 0 okay lambda of q1 is 0 lambda of q2 is 1 okay and q0 is your starting state
So these are all the six tuples used to represent an automator. So here in this example, Q will be, you have three states, Q0, Q1 and Q2. And your input is made up of the combination of A and B. Output is the combination of 0 and 1. And transition function, as I told you, it is represented like this. Q0, when the input is A, it goes to Q1. Q0, when the input is B, it goes to itself. And you have to write all the transitions. And lambda is your output function. Lambda of Q0 is 0. Output of Q1 is 0. Output of Q2 is 1. And the Q0 is the starting symbol. And there is no final state here. Okay, so this is an automata where you don't have any final state. It is going to scan the input from starting to end. And it is going to produce an output based on the input that is given to the automata. Okay, so this is the way in which a uh, more machine is represented. Or oh, we'll see some other examples too. Okay, thank you.